Hello and welcome all of you to this second session of general awareness for TISNET 2023. So if you are preparing for TISNET 2023, please subscribe to our channel Pathfinder for me. If you are looking for strategic inputs, current affairs and GK related inputs. And if you are looking for inputs on quantitative aptitude and similar areas, reasoning, subscribe to our channel mend your maths you could subscribe to both of them also mend your maths so in these sessions we will be covering around 10 to 15 questions of uh, general awareness every week and these are questions which are in line with the kind of questions that appear in tisnet every year year after year so here is the first question Which of the following is renewable, exhaustible natural resource? So we are looking at renewable and exhaustible. So obviously all of them are exhaustible, correct? This is exhaustible, this is exhaustible, this is also exhaustible and this is also exhaustible. But renewable. Coal, petroleum and minerals might not be renewable in one's lifetime. So the only renewable, exhaustible, natural resource out of these options is forest. Okay, next question. Which of the following birds are endangered? So here there must be two answers. Great Indian Bustard and Vulture. Both are endangered species. And what are endangered species? In fact, these two are critically endangered species. Critically endangered species are species that are almost facing extinction. The pink-headed duck you can find in Gangetic Plains in India and even in Maharashtra. Passenger pigeon, uh, it was endemic to America and is now an extinct animal. Next question. Which of the following regions is not known for mangroves in India? So we have four options. Kondapur, this place is near Udipi, Udupi, Surat, West Bengal, basically Sundarbans and Ratnagiri. So the correct answer here is Surat. Surat is not known for mangroves. What are mangroves? Now mangrove is a type of plant or type of vegetation that can grow and sustain in coastal regions where you often find, in fact, where you always find saline or brackish water. So not every kind of plant can survive in such regions. So these are called as mangroves and they're important to maintain the ecosystem of coastal areas and they provide protection against cyclones and storms, especially protection for coastal regions. So Kondapur near Udipi also is known for mangroves. Sundarbans obviously has mangroves. And even Ratnagiri has mangroves. So Ratnagiri and Kondapur are there in Arabian Sea, whereas West Beng uh, Sundarbans is in Bay of Bengal. Next question. Park Strait separates India from? The correct answer is Sri Lanka. So you know that between the V and the drop of Sri Lanka, this particular area is known as Sri Lanka. If you look at the V of India, V made by the Indian coasts, on this side you have Kerala, on this side you have Tamil Nadu, in between Sri Lanka and India you will have Park Strait. Next question, which of the following regions is known for coniferous coniferous forests in India. Now, coniferous forests in India is Himalayan region, not Eastern Ghats, not Western Ghats, not Chhattisgarh. Now, what do you mean by coniferous forests? These trees are typical conical in shape. So, you would have seen these trees, and from the shape comes the name coniferous. These trees sustain in uh, places where winters are long and uh, temperatures are moderate, you know, summer temperatures are 
moderate and this such region in India is the Himalayan region. So some of the trees which are common are fir trees, pine trees, even spruces. These are some of the common trees found in coniferous forest. Next question. Next question. In India, the longest shoreline is in the region of. Now, all these are coastal states. Uh, Maharashtra and Gujarat have long shorelines, all right. But Gujarat shoreline is actually crisscross covered. And therefore, Gujarat with 1600 kilometers has the longest shoreline in India. And in terms of shorelines for countries, can you guess which country has the longest shoreline in the world? And no, the answer is not USA, the answer is Canada. So Canada has the longest shoreline. In fact, Canada also has the highest percentage of its area, around 22% of its area, which can be called as coastal region for Canada. And what percent of India's region landmass is coastal? The answer would be close to 2.3% of India's land is coastal region. A similar interesting question is, which state in India has the highest number of states that are bordering it? The correct answer is UP. I think there are nine states that border the state of UP. Next question. The position when earth is farthest from the sun is known as out of the four options aphelion, perihelion, winter season and summer solstice. The correct answer is aphelion. So, you know that the sun's orbit is actually elliptical. Uh, sorry, the earth's orbit around the sun is elliptical. So, if this is the farthest point from the sun, this is your aphelion. Now, mind you, the closest point to the sun is known as perihelion. So, perihelion is the closest point, aphelion is the uh, farthest point. Surprisingly, we are farthest from the sun in the month of July, just after our summer season. And we are closest from the uh, during, we are closest to the sun during winter season. This happens during the month of July. So, it is paradoxical that we are farthest from the sun during our summer season. We are at the aphelion and we are closest to the sun during our winter season that is during perihelion. Now, mind you, even the moon has an elliptical orbit and even for the moon, the same thing applies. The point where in the moon's orbit when moon is closest to the earth is apogee and the point in moon's orbit when moon is farthest from the earth is called as perigee. When animals adopt a similar state like sleep to reduce their metabolic rate, they are basically hibernating. Now, these three terms REM sleep, non-REM sleep and transpirating. So, transpiration is nothing but exhalation of water vapor by plants. Exhalation that is uh, of water vapor. That is transpiration. REM sleep, REM stands for rapid eye movement. So, what is this REM sleep? It occurs during night and is characterized by rapid eye movements and dreams. So, during REM sleep, you are likely to have dreams, you are likely to have rapid eye movements and you can also expect a faster pulse and faster breathing. And this is also an important aspect of our daily sleep, REM sleep. And then we have the non-REM sleep. So, here there are no rapid eye movements, this is a quiet sleep and both these types of sleeps have their own importance. What about hibernation? So, during hibernation, animals slow down their metabolism 
and breathing even heartbeat sometimes even the body temperature can drop for animals and generally animals hibernate to pass very severe winter season apart from bears squirrels hedgehogs bats turtles snakes all of them hibernate during winters next who among the following wrote a book called indica so indica was written by megasthenes so megasthenes was a greek traveler who came to india and most of his work was lost but you know people who quoted him from those sources his book has been partially reconstructed so he had written a book called indica what about the other through other three people ibn batuta he visited during the reign of muhammad bin tughlaq i think around 1334 and he wrote a book called rahla what about fahian he was the earliest traveler and he uh, visited india somewhere around 399 ad during the reign of chandragupta 2 and he wrote something a book called fo ko ki fo ko ki and huen sang he traveled during the reign of harshavardhana in 627 ad and he wrote a book called c u ki c u ki next question the only source of early vedic civilization is the first or the oldest of all vedas that is rigved with this we come to an end of the second session of gk for tisnet 2023 if you plan to prepare for tisnet 2023 please do get in touch with me on this number 9826062415 and in case you are looking for more such sessions you can subscribe to our channel pathfinder for me and if you are looking for content related to quantitative aptitude or reasoning subscribe to our channel mend your maths thank you very much